Wow, what is that on her nose? All right, I'm back. Cool, man. So, uh, oh, thank you for sharing that. That's a dope story to share and they're yeah, very inspirational too, man. Bubba popping literally out of the phone. Crazy. Wow. <laughs> I was like, why is his head all the way out here? <laughs> Oh man. Yeah. yeah I, and then that's when I realized I was like, well, I guess, you know, Facebook is a projection of my consciousness or something. I guess these people might actually, you know, be in my consciousness or something too. So mm -hmm. there's a connection there. Nice man. So like many of us, Bubba popped up and he was like a Morpheus figure. That's how I refer to him, man. Just as far as, you know, especially for people of African heritage, people of color in general, looking for something that reflects themselves when you start Googling and checking out the psychedelic information that's out there and there's there's not many now there still isn't many but back in the days there was even less and if anything it was just Baba's name would pop up if you knew the name and then you know not, nothing much beyond that so um what was um what was yeah how did you feel you know at that time the the revelations or the information that he was sharing how relevant how useful was it for you at that time for me I didn't feel like um I really trusted his word at first you know, I, I challenged him a lot. I probably was really disrespectful at first. You know, he talked about, uh, I remember the first time he brought up Yiming Zoo crystals. And I said, I'm not buying a glow in the dark paint stone, you know. <laughs> I had no I had no idea, you know, what it actually was. And so I tried to prove him wrong, you know, on several occasions. You know, I, I'd take the mushroom, I'd be like, is that really truth? And I'd ask the mushroom, you know, I'm like, and the mushroom would show me like the long way, maybe how he got, uh, how he did his math on um you know where the mushroom came from and its intelligence and the places you could go and so i i started kind of apprenticing myself to the mushroom like well you know since this is really how things are he tells things exactly how they are and no one was doing that at that time you know no one no one said exactly how it was you know they'd say it how it kind of was or give their opinion of it experiences were bleeding over into his lectures in such a way that he would tell about things that were happening real time in real life, you know, in the spiritual realms. And, um, you know, I, I just, I, I really wanted to help him as much as I possibly could, you know, so I'd, I'd take mushrooms and I finally got to a point where I found, I found a frequency or, or I guess you would say a dimension where we could all communicate. And um, sometimes I communicate things over there and then try to talk about it, you know, on the phone, I call him up on the phone and be like, yeah, I just went in last weekend. Um, so have you seen, you know, the new AI <laughs> or, you know, have you, you know, we just talk, you know, and I do most of the talking, but, you know, every now and then he'd say like five or six words. And then I go in on my next trip and try to figure out what he was talking about. Cause sometimes he seemed like he talked in riddles, you know, like, man, I'm like, well, what does that mean? You know? Well, say that was the thrice greatest okay well now i'm looking at the emerald tablets you know so <laughs> nice uh, yeah cool so you you um presented at the detroit entheogenic conference or the psychedelic conference as he's known there's a couple times now yeah right yeah yeah, yeah how, twice how did, yeah man how did that how did that happen obviously we know the connections um, but you know was you presenting before I was, I was dragged uh, kind of kicking and screaming. <laughs> Not really, I, I didn't really want to, um, but I got to Food of the Gods. And, um, you know, after that time I had been training, you know, I, I figured out 15 grams, 16 grams and do 20 grams. And, you know, I, I was at a dinner table uh, and Baba Mudu was there and he said, well, you seem like you have a lot to say. Would you like to speak? I'm like, no, no one wants to hear me speak. And, you know, then he like, says, oh, hey, Baba, you know, can, I, can Acacia speak at the conference? And Baba was like, uh, well, what are you going to talk about? And so <laughs> that's, that's, how I, that's how I started speaking. Um, and I didn't know at that point, I, it took me, you know, taking another trip to go and find out what I could talk about because I really wanted to, you know, share something that could help other people maybe navigate this thing, you know, at the higher doses. And um, so I talked about uh, the Info Particle realms you know and uh charged words of power um because i i really feel like a, the ancients um you know use that in their fighting technology and a lot of a lot of stories were preserved in the hyper dimensional realms that were mouth to ear and the mushroom is a storyteller you know um 
and I really enjoy the way the mushroom presents things. You know, they say, oh, it's just a hallucination. Well, if the mushroom can tell me, you know, what it was like firsthand at the writing of the, the constitution or firsthand what it was like to be in the shoes of a European warrior, you know, by using information on my own DNA to like share with me, you know, what my ancestors might have saw, you know, maybe a slave in the Oval Office or maybe someone in Africa, you know, in the 1600s, you know, who was training. Um, that, that's, that's what I wanted to share with people is um, how words were used and how frequencies and information um, also contain a plasma or an intelligent, um, highly charged particle that has a lot of information in it, you know, and what we can do with that. So that's how I, that was the first thing I said I was going to talk about. Oh, oh, oh. So with that said, you know, with Bubba's well known for the so-called high dose experience you've made reference to it a few times i've checked you out and i've also heard you make reference to it as the indigenous dose rather than the high dose because again i remember that's not something that baba coined when he when we when we used to rap he usually be like that's just the dose that i take and if you know if you want to say i don't i don't consider it a high dose you know it's just it's just you're hungry yeah you know so um what is the indigenous dose slash high dose experience why is that relevant why are we not you know why is the recreational dose you know, or, you know, what's the common school of thought and the heroic dose being five grams, not the way that you're approaching it with this 15, 20 gram, 25 gram talk? Well, I approach it as if it's a meal, you know? Um, like, I feel like the indigenous dose, if you're on the, the plains of Africa, you know, and, and you're, you're, you're hungry and you see a giant mushroom cap, you're not gonna eat a quarter, you're not gonna weigh out the mushroom cap, you know? <laughs> you're just gonna eat the whole thing, you know? You're gonna put it in your mouth, you're like, man, I'm still kind of hungry. And you're gonna look under the rock and you're gonna eat the ant too, because it's a grub, you know? And then you're gonna, you know, you're gonna pick around, you know, and you're gonna make a meal out of it, you know? And so I was like, okay, well, if, if I was on the Sub-Saharan Plains, you know, when my ancestors was, then I would be eating enough to at least fill my stomach. You know, my stomach's the size of my fist. So, you know, if I'm not eating that much mushroom material, then I'm probably not gonna experience what one of my ancestors went through. And that's really what I was going for, you know? And so it was just logical for me at the time. I really didn't subscribe to, I really, I really don't even like, like weighing my dosages, but it gives me a better idea of what the dosages do. And, you know, one of my teachers said outside of Baba Kalini, he said, uh, you know, the difference between science and people messing around is writing it down and being accurate. So it's just a way for me to be more accurate about what the journey is like around those doses, I guess. But yeah, I still don't know what a high dose is either. So, cool. <laughs> so um, with that said, what are, um, I'm aware that you're a practitioner of other sacred plant medicines and then you work with, but before, in fact, before we get there, because we, we brought up on the plains of Africa, let's just go there because once again, Africa and psychedelics don't go hand in hand when you go out into the community. You know, this is something that Baba put out there, <laughs> me and many other support. So before we move forward into some other, medicines that you may be working with. Just give us some insight into your knowledge, what you're privy to about African psychedelics. Well, personally, um, I feel like it's the root of all of the art, literature, and culture, you know, and, and that might seem a really broad expression to say, <clears throat> but I believe that some of the art forms and art patterns were tools of preservation, like people's actual experiences where they may have, you know, stumbled upon a psychedelic and just decided to start drawing a specific way. And you'll notice like, even with uh, something like kente cloth, it's an artwork, but it's also a weapon and a, an object of power. So like the higher people, and I guess you could say the priesthood or the kings, you know, they would want people who are like the herbalists to take probably the entheogen so that they could charge up their objects of power. Like in Black Panther, you know how they have the shields, mm -hmm. uh, the, the, the shields um, that they were using um, where they had the rhinoceroses, you know, yeah. on the plains. Um, you know, one of my grandparents, um, you know, extended family, not, not in my, my, my nuclear family. Yeah. Um, he, he passed on and I was on 15 grams of mushrooms and he came and he taught me the long way how our lineage would actually braid prayers into each strand of the kente cloth. There'd be like 42 strands of silk. And for a king to wear the kente cloth, you know, you had to put protection words of power into the actual threads to charge it up so that when you know the finished product was made 
it wouldn't just exist here. It would exist in the spiritual realms where the ancestors can see so that they could also see and recognize him as king. So there's just technologies that I see in Africa that come out of the mushroom, but they're not called technologies. We don't think about it in our minds. We're like, okay, well, the food's delicious, you know, um, the, the clothing's beautiful, the people are beautiful. And that's all very true, but I see the infrastructure of the society, you know, especially the great kings um, who had palaces, the different designs of the palaces, the societies, the panther society for one, uh, it's coming from the mushroom. Because when you take the mushroom and you shape shift into a panther, you have all of the warrior capabilities, you know, that the king would have. So there's societies of warriors who would take entheogens, transform into something different, uh, connect with the animal spirit that they killed. You know, they say, uh, young men in the bush, you know, will drink the acacia nilotica soup, right? And run out into the bush and kill a lion. Well, they don't tell the part where they have to resurrect the spirit of the lion in order to use its pelt, you know? And the actual fighting power of the lion resides within the young warrior. And that's part of the rite of passage of manhood is that he has to also be able to become the lion in battle. So, you know, <clears throat> that's part of my research is finding the missing pieces, you know, in certain things. Um, but I would say other than just the art and um, the warfare, creating reality, like the Bwiti and Iboga for me has actually been a huge area of study um, because Bwiti, they say that Iboga taught them Bwiti. They're not Bwiti people, you know? The Iboga taught this system of wisdom um, through real life change. And I believe that the mushroom teaches the same way. Um, I feel like, you know, the ancestors and people who live in certain areas of Africa, especially cattle herding tribes like the Fulani uh, people, um, they express what the mushroom teaches um, through all areas of society, through kindness, through generosity, um, through moral standing, Omoluabe, you know, the system of being like a, a, a child of the chief, you know, a, a state of being. Um, that goes along with the mushroom that I think is embedded in African history and African culture. And I think it's really important, uh, not, not just the art, but also the, the actual systems of behavior and combat and warriorship that are connected to the mushroom. It's not separate. You know, a lot of people look at it as separate. I think that a lot of higher systems of warriorship, even African Kung Fu, is related to being able to connect with different spirits of animals and different spirits of nature and respect them, even the Orisha spirits, you know, and taking an entheogen and working with the Orisha spirits, it's like dealing with a really big ancestor, you know? So you're doing your dance on one side of the world and someone could be taking mushrooms watching you and it's like a giant spirit is mounted on your head and you have all the intelligence of everyone who's ever connected with that energy. And you're able to express that through the dance and you're able to express that through the art and you're able to express that through the way that you speak. You know, if that's Oshun or Oya or Ogun, it's able to come out of you, you know? Mm -hmm. And the mushroom gives it an opportunity, like a bridge to bridge between the individual, the ancestor and the spirit world, you know? And that's part of African culture, you know? That's part of who we are, so. Yes, I know why I've got you on here, man. This is what we need. So we're bringing, man, bring the heat. So sis, like, I know we're gonna. Have, like, I'm telling you now, we're gonna have to do re-ups on this, like, moving forward. Like, if as long as you got the time and space, if you're up for it. Um, Always, man. You know, man. like, I, I give. I'm thankful. I'm so thankful that Baba Kalindi came and you know just lived his life, uh, because he helped me to, to understand myself in a in a much better way. And, you know, he's helped so many thousands of others do just that. Uh, mm. But even more than that, you know, I, he's still around. You know, I still want to make him proud, you know. Mm. Mm. Um, you know, he left a lot of technology that I want to I want to talk about when we get a chance, um, especially the Palantir, because I sat before the Palantir, but I didn't I didn't speak about it afterwards. You know, I'd like to share more about the technology that he was able to find for us to use as a people. Yeah, man, most deaf, most deaf. Oh, bless up, sis. So, um, where are we going? Iboga. Let's just stay with Iboga for the Briti for a moment, because again, I've, I've only got ten percent on my phone. Uh, can I can I switch locations real quick? I'll go in yeah. the house and put my phone on the charger. Okay, give me one second. All right. 